Hello, my brother. Hey. Hello, brother. How are you, mate? Let's see if I can figure out where am I. Hey. <laughs> oh, were you hanging out? Somebody's apparently calling me on my other Skype. Oh, okay. Man, that picture is really bouncy. Can you see me very well? Yeah, I can see you. Okay. Uh, yeah? Can you turn some... Okay, you're, you're all... Not moving very good. Oh, that doesn't help. I need a little bit more light in here. <laughs> How you doing? Good, mate. Yeah, you got no more lights? Hey. Huh? You got no more lights? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see if I can get this light to my... Hold on. All right, let's see how this one works. Oh, no video. That's much better on the video. There better? We are. Oh, my goodness. Much better. It's that me. Is, that is loads. Yes. You're not, you're not just pickles anymore. <laughs> it was like, I couldn't yeah. hear you very well either. He started sounding like Wally. <laughs> oh, Wally, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> it was all digital sounding. <laughs> I get all the yeah. I'll understand all the lingo from the kids' cartoon. <laughs> That's good. Yes, yeah. we have that many children. Yeah, uh, I think you and Tina shared a happiness. Actually, something about the Avengers. Yes, you tried to have that in my hand. Did you? Uh, I liked it. It was a good movie. Yeah, I thought it was fantastic. You got to see it before me, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure why that is. It's just the way they do things. Yeah. What did you think of it, brother? Oh, it was a lot of action. You know, I, <laughs> I guess there's a part of that whole sort of thing that, that wears on me, the whole good guy versus bad guy thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's always this, this setup through the whole thing. They make the bad guy seem kind of very two-dimensional and – you, know, you get to really hate him, and then at some point in time, somebody beats the tar out of him, and the whole audience laughs at that. And it's like, you know, I don't know. It's it's not realistic. I I, I don't really like trying to look at life that way. But so it's hard. You know that one part where the Hulk kind of did the the rag doll thing on the yeah. guy. I was sitting there. I mean, it's like you're waiting for it the whole time. You know. Some point in time, somebody's going to toss this guy around and everybody's going to laugh, you know. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> but it was, you know, I guess you can detach from it. Yeah. There was a there was a couple of good jokes in there. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Not, not my favorite thing in the world, I guess. Yeah. You sound like a real hoot to take to the movies, mate. <laughs> <laughs> can you be my date? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Forget it. <laughs> you buying the popcorn? Oh uh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's not. It's not my favorite thing. That's There's not... movies I really do enjoy, but I don't mm. know. Not, not necessarily. Cool. So how you been? Oh, fabulous! And yourself? Good. Very good. Yeah. Lots yeah. of hopes on the horizon. I tell you that. I got finals this week. Pray for me. Mm. <laughs> and uh, once that's over, I, I'll be very happy to go and look for work again. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really tired of sitting at a desk, riding the desk and, and studying and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep taking classes or whatnot, but I'm actually going to go and try to get employed again. Yeah. So you'll be an auto electrician, uh, auto mechanic. Technician. Yeah. Technician. Yeah. Mm. Fantastic. See, obviously, or, see over here, see over here to do that, you've got to do an apprenticeship. You go and get a job as an apprentice and they do it that way. So you've just gone to university, have you? Well, you go to the university in order to obtain the knowledge that you'll need to pass a certification examination. And that's not offered through the university. That's offered from a private company called ASE here. And... Um, American standard. I don't even know what it stands for. Anyways. Um, we're just getting closer all the time. Uh, so uh, after you get the certification, that basically is what you need. 
Mm. And I mean, it, just because you have it doesn't know you mean you necessarily know what you're doing. It just means that you know enough terminology. You're ready to you're ready to uh, learn from somebody. I guess I don't know. I, I I'm really hoping nobody thinks that just because I have an, a certification in uh, electrical systems, automotive electrical systems, that uh, that they need to let me work on their car. <laughs> I'm really hoping that's not what they're going to be thinking. Yeah. It means I could help somebody who knows what they're doing and has been doing it for a decade or so work on a car. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm certainly not ready to tackle a 2010 Tahoe. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But have right. you been staying busy trying to get things worked out and sold and bought yeah. and all that stuff, Put a bunch huh? of stuff in storage, aren't you? Uh, well, we're not actually. I think we're going to sell pretty much everything. Most of the stuff we bought when we came down to Sydney to furnish this house, most of it we got off eBay anyway, just because when you've got young kids, you don't bother buying anything nice. So it's uh, it's nice in that it's nice colour and it's all durable, but it's you know we'll sell it on eBay again probably, get rid of it because storage costs money. And then yeah. in a few years, if we get bored with that lifestyle, we'll just buy it all again so yeah i'll probably keep uh, a couple of things like my guitar and a keyboard i might give that put that with my parents or somebody put it in their basement or garage yeah. or somewhere so, yeah uh, we maintained one for a little while when we were sort of in the wind as it were um a storage room yeah had a storage room for a little while mainly for beds we weren't necessarily going to be quite as long term as it seems like you guys are going for. I don't, I don't know if you actually need to leave where you are. It's more of a choice. Uh, when we were doing that, it was, we had to go, mm. you know, father was saying, you're leaving. Mm. Where are we going? I'll show you when you get there. <laughs> mm. But we didn't actually stay out on the road for very long. Mm. So mm. It made sense financially just to put, as much stuff as we really had to have in storage for a little while, mm. you know, once we got another place or once we got where he wanted us to go, we went and retrieved it all. Mm. Great. Fantastic. So you guys are kind of making a, a go of it for lifestyle. So, yeah. 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 We didn't know if that's what was going to happen and we were actually looking forward to it. Mm. He had a different plan in mind. So, okay. Mm. I think Tina and I would still very much like to do that mm. in the future once the once the children are on uh, a little bit more in years. And, I don't know. Maybe when there's a couple less of them. <laughs> That's a crowded. <laughs> Leaving at the house. Your little yeah. sleeper camper there is going to be awfully crowded. <laughs> it will be. Poor angry Canela. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they only they only sleep in there, really, don't they? <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. They'll be outdoorsy. Do you guys have uh, RV parks there in Australia? Yeah, and there's uh, a lot of free ones as well. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, they're not as flashy as the they call them caravan parks over here. <laughs> caravan parks. So. I was telling you, I was going to move to the living room for this uh, Skype call, yeah. <laughs> and I was. I was wondering if you guys even call. I was like, maybe, I, maybe they call it the parlor or something like that. No, no, living room. Living room, okay. Living room. Going, knows what a living room is. <laughs> living room, living room, lounge room, dining room, bedroom. <laughs> so. Well, universal. Yeah. Until you get to Japan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's all just one room. Just one room. <laughs> yeah. Separated by paper. Yeah. Their, their their toilets apparently are uh, a little bitty room with a hole in the floor. Oh, oh, yeah. I've heard stuff about that. Terrible. Terrible. They don't have, like, you know, latrines that are above the ground. Dunnies. Yeah. They don't have dunnies above the ground. They're kind of... Toilets. Dunnies. They call them toilets. No, he said he called them the dunny. Okay. We, call them on. we call them toilets. Dunny for slang. Dunny for slang. See? Yeah. Right, totally. Yeah. <laughs> for the Sheilas. For the Sheilas. Yeah. 
Right. <laughs> Australian for girl. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be careful. You get in trouble using that word with some people. <laughs> what, Sheila? <laughs> yeah. Really? No one in Australia, I think. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's like calling girls chicks over here. Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, I don't ever call broads chicks. <laughs> <laughs> they get mad at that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> How is Miss Amy doing? She's great. She's, uh, what's she doing? She's sold a few things that we own on eBay already. And where, what else? I started unpacking the garage yesterday, throwing out a lot of stuff. This is the longest we've been in a house. It's been, oh, close to, must be close to two years. So it's, um, uh, you accumulate a lot of junk, so. Don't so, I know? Mm, so we start throwing a lot of stuff out. <laughs> Boy, howdy. Yeah. When we moved here, I got pretty much everything in the back of my truck and on our 16 foot trailer in two loads. Mm. So it was two of those. Man, if we tried to leave now, <laughs> it'd be a little bit more than that. Let me tell yeah. you what. Yeah. Yeah. You tend to pack it in when you're, you know, in one place for so long. But I try to keep stuff organized and weed it out so you're not gathering too much stuff. Mm. It's difficult. Mm. Definitely. It is. Mm. All the kiddos are healthy? Yeah, they're all great. Yeah, my uh, daughter was ripping some teeth this week. She's mm. over, over that now, I think. She's happy. Oh, good. Mm. Was she running any fever or anything? No, just crying a little bit during the night. And, uh, yeah. So, oh, that's, that's okay. Good. That's all it is, and that's that's mm. a good good thing. Mm. Oh, I had to ask you if you were making fun of people from Texas with that that uh, that uh, cartoon next to the, uh, the <laughs> Brother Colin section there. I was thinking – Hmm, he's either making fun of blonde girls or, or, or Texans there. Uh, all, I, all I was really doing is I found the cartoon and it said T for Texas. And I thought, oh, Colin lives in Texas. I'll put that next to his thing. <laughs> That's all it was. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Relatability. Yeah. Did you see it? No. Oh, yeah. It's, in, mm. it's a cartoon of um, like a pageant. There's a guy saying, what's the capital of Texas? And there's a blonde girl standing there. T. <laughs> so, that's bad. You gotta have yeah, a, bad. You gotta have some fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to see your face. We hadn't talked yeah. to you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's been insane around here. Uh, last couple of times we've talked to you, it's, there's been uh, other people around. Yeah, <laughs> it's been busy. I hadn't had an opportunity to really just mm. say hello, mate. All right, mate. <laughs> How often do you talk to Chris? Uh, we oh, sometimes it's only once a week. Sometimes it's less. Sometimes it's more. You know. Yeah. So just depend uh, on what's going on. Yeah, we got a we had a couple of weeks off his show. We're doing another one tomorrow night. He's ready for another one. So, mm, off the cuff, mate. Yeah. <laughs> off the cuff. Off the cuff. So. Does he prepare for off the cuff? <laughs> I think actually this show is more off the cuff <laughs> than the off the cuff because this show, <laughs> there's nothing going on. <laughs> it's off the cuff. Hey, yeah, <laughs> that's the way we like it. No, but no, he doesn't. No, he just looks up a few <laughs> scriptures. Looks up a few scriptures and then, then it's off the cuff. Mm. Yeah. Has well, that's the, good. Has the text prepared? So. Mm. Now he's got them all in his head yeah. this point. Mm. He's way better at quoting scripture than I am, I can tell you that much. Yeah, well. <laughs> Just the ones that mean something to me. Mm. I got, there's a lot of stuff, I'm sure. People still break things out, I'm sure. I, I just not wrote, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I believe you. Oh, that painting that I showed you? 
by the way? Yes. Yes. It's, Send me a picture. It's it's on my Facebook. Oh, great. I'll get in there and have a, it. Yeah. It is my Facebook picture. Mm. So all you have to do is copy it. Okay. And you can use it however you need to. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I'll do that. Brilliant. Stunning. I liked it. Like, I'm glad. Like it a lot. You like it a lot? I like it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah. cool. So how did you, <laughs> this could almost come under a branches episode, how did you come to Yahusha? Firstly, Colin. Colin? Well, who came first? Who came to Yahusha oh, first? My story. Um mm. It's kind of an interesting, uh, kind of a different tale. I don't know. I mean, I was raised in the circus, of course, and uh, like a lot of us were. And I actually accepted Messiah, you know, by his, by the, by the fake name, by the wrong name. I accepted Messiah when I was four years old. Um, and I meant it, you know, my parents shared Messiah with me and, and I went to the, the Sunday school and all that. And when I accepted Messiah, I meant it. I, I don't know how I knew, but I knew I needed him. I just didn't know why. And I do remember that. I remember right after I spoke the words, you know, for him to come into my heart and be my savior and king. Right after that, I do remember saying, why did I do that in my heart? And uh, who has spent about the next 14 years of my life, six, 16 years of my life, teaching me the answer to that question? Mm. Why? Um, I was called out of the circus at I would, what I would consider a pretty young age, about 13 I started skipping the youth group thing that my parents made me go to, uh, to go and smoke cigarettes with what turned out to be eventually my brother's girlfriend, <laughs> incidentally. She was, you know, stuck in the same one as I was. Uh, oh, Can you get that? Yeah. Let's try that again. Just one second. Look like you broke it. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a bomb was going off there for a second. Like, wouldn't, make it, wouldn't, siren, wah, wah. <laughs> wouldn't make a very good bomb diffuser. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, no, I uh, I went into a lot of different other religions looking for a fit i suppose i spent the most time in the celtic orthodox studying magic and things like that i found some pretty profound truths there like ah, magic so like it, magic is real yeah. but it requires the power of a demon to use a few weeks a month ago when you said that you did magic i thought you meant you were a magician you did tricks you mean you, no, you did I'm sorcery? Talking about casting spells, yeah. Fantastic. And it was it was real. I mean, you mm. can you could make things happen in the spirit world, but in the spiritual realm. But the interesting thing about all that to me was that consistently, and this is one of the reasons I began to understand that Yahuwah was really there, and that all that was really what was going on, is because consistently they're trying to pull you away from it. Mm. You know, if Yahuwah was a lie or didn't exist or something like that, then why would you spend, why would someone spend so much time trying to pull you away from it? Even mm. after supposedly you've already moved on. Mm. They're still trying to say, see, see, he doesn't exist. Mm. You know, and you're going, mm. okay, but why are you spending so much time to, trying to convince me of that? Mm. The truth is he was always there. Yeah. You know, mm. And he was showing me things all throughout that time. Mm. And I never stopped 
loving the Messiah. I never stopped believing in him all throughout that, which sounds kind of strange, but mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about him and I didn't understand how bad I was hurting him or, you know, how, how much of an insult and a disrespect that was. Mm-hmm. But as I came to understand it, I finally just said, it was really just that I was tired of hypocrisy. That's why I left mm-hmm. the circus because, you know, I hear all these people talking about love and understanding and all the while being, judged for not being Mm. a certain particular thing Mm. anyway uh at some point in time i just i got frustrated i got fed up i've been spending a lot of time with a friend of mine named lou de benedetto he lives over in california now um who was raised as a seventh day adventist and he done a pretty good job convincing me that the Sabbath was not Sunday. Mm. At that point in time, I was pretty much ready to accept it. But, you know, I I was tired. I was just so tired of of listening to people about this. And I finally just broke down. I asked you who I said, it's kind of like what Lou said, you know, I don't even know who you are. I said, if you are there, if you're watching over me, then I want you, you know, I consider you to be the almighty. And you show me who you are. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't send a man. You show me, please. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's really the attitude. This is a lot of what goes on with regards to speaking with atheists, you know, because they, they talk about, well, prove to me that he exists. You know, you say, well, prove to me that he doesn't. You know, it's it's a ridiculous argument because you can't prove that he does and you can't prove that he doesn't in a laboratory. Mm. He he reveals himself to those whom he chooses to reveal himself. Mm. If anybody wants to know who that, whether or not he exists, mm. all you have to do is say, if you will reveal yourself to me, I will obey you. Mm. That's interesting. You know, nice. and without fail, I I have never seen a person who has ever been in that position whom he did not reveal himself to, hmm. who has not seen him and understood from from him that he's there walking with him. He hmm. will reveal himself. Hmm. Uh, and it turns out, like I said, that's what he was waiting for. Because as soon as I prayed that prayer, whoa. Hmm. You know, that whole world just started opening up. I could remember periods of joy, times of joy happening maybe two or three times a year around that time for me. I, I Most of the time I was pretty down, pretty lost. But two or three times a year something would happen and I would feel some joy. And uh, once I started observing the Sabbath, you know, it started happening probably – at least once a month. Mm. I started feeling some joy once a month and year went by and pretty soon it was like every week. You know, mm. I was, I, I would, I couldn't really go a whole week without finding myself in a pretty good at mood mm. at time. I mean, there mm. was some rough stuff and I still was dealing with a lot of things, but it was a lot more frequent. And before mm. long, it's, it's moment to moment. Mm. You know, you're really feeling joy on a moment to moment basis. Mm. He shows you how to feel joy. Mm. Anyway, uh, I learned about the Sabbath. That's where it started out from. Like I said, uh, it was mostly he affected that understanding through a couple of different uh, teachers, and then, but mostly through my relationship with Lou De Benedetto. Mm. You might not be able to tell, but he's Italian. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Good old Lou. Hey. You know, what are you doing over there? <laughs> talking about my buddy Lou over here. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, forget about it. Anyway, uh, used to like to, you know, we hang out with him. He had his dad over to Sal, you know? Sal was Sicilian. I don't know if you've met any Sicilians before, but uh, they're good people. You know what I'm talking about? Sal was... Uh, that was a character. Yeah. It was actually in his kitchen I figured out what I wanted to do in my life. 
Mm. It was down in the uh, down in McAllen, Texas, in a house that Sal built. And I was looking at this wine press right there in the kitchen, just a miniature to remind him of his parents. You know what I'm talking about? And I said to myself, now there's something to do. You know? I could be a vineyard tender. I could, I, I could do that. I could make wine. Sure. So I, that's what I want to do. I want to be a vineyard. It's mm. uh, my dream. Tina's dream, too, over here. Together. We're going to do that together. We get the time. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Forget we get about the it. land and time and the blessing. And it all has to line up according to him. Yeah. Forget about it. Yeah, you get all the time and land in. Yeah. Bob's your uncle. Yep. What? So, uh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so... Uh, I was working. I uh, I was I was observing the Sabbath, and I knew a couple of things about his name. didn't Didn't really understand that. Obviously, uh, fossilized customs helped a lot with some of that. But um, I was already observing the Sabbath and such by about the time I was twenty, mm. and uh, that was that was really where it begins. And I think that that's where it begins for most people. Starting with the Sabbath. Now you got a whole day to actually study. <laughs> that, that's a good thing to do. Anyways, um, so uh, I was working a job. This is right after my third daughter was born. I was working a part-time job at Toys R Us, and they were selling this interactive software for children called the Leap Pad uh, program. And um, had an old couple come in who was interested in maybe buying it for their grandchildren. And it was kind of funny because, you know, by, by about five minutes or so into this conversation with this couple, I had um, the old guy kind of looking at me. He's going, and he looks over his wife and he's like, do you think that he, do you know, should I go and get the, hold on for a second. I was like, Whatever, whatever. I kept talking to the woman, you know. He comes back in, hands me his copy of Fossilized Customs. I think it was the sixth edition, something like that. He's like, you're really going to like this book. I can tell by talking to you, you're going to like this book. I'm like, thanks, you know. I appreciate it. Uh, I kind of thumbed through it a little bit. I felt like I had read a lot of that material before. I'd read a lot of little books, you know, yeah. people would hand out, which were basically you open them up, there's maybe a scripture, maybe two, and then a whole bunch of what this guy thinks that's talking about. Yeah. You know, or girl. Actually, it's not just guy, but there was, a, there was a few of them that I read by women as well. Anyways, just a couple of scriptures, whatever. And I thought I'd read a couple of these things. I'd set it on my night table. And it was a used copy. I mean, it had some highlighting and things like that. In it. And I, I didn't, it sat there for six months. Cool. Six months sat on my, my night table. And finally I ran out of stuff to read. And I was like, eh, I guess I'll read it. By the end of the first page, I was hooked. <laughs> I, when you start reading it from the beginning, you know, mm. by the end of the first page, I was going, wow, this isn't like what I read. And I kept going, you know, and mm. I, I digested it slowly over about mm. a year. I'd read a page or two. I mean, I, 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 I have a tendency to take things in like that really slow. You know, I'm not, I'm not just going to read it at face value and, and I really want to chew on it. I want to digest it. I want to go and look some of this stuff up, I, you know, got done with it. And I said, man, if even a 10th of what's written in this book is true, say the, you know, say a lot of it is wrong, but even a 10th of it is true. There's some serious, there's some things seriously wrong about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as, as faithful people and, um, I said I gotta I gotta just I gotta just take this book apart. I have to prove it wrong. Mm. That's the way I do things. You know, it, the truth is the truth, and it will stand up mm. against scrutiny. So if I 
it, my problem was that I believed it. Mm. I believed it a lot because I really appreciated the way that Lou did his work, the way he did his research, the way he presented um, his source materials and things like that. Mm. He told you where he found the information. Mm. And, um, you know, and then encourage you, please go look this up for yourself. That, understanding that that's very important, especially now I understand it. That if a person reads that book and just they're just a follower, you know, and they're just, they do it without really studying into it, they're losing the opportunity to have a personal relationship with the creator. Mm. Because the creator really will reveal himself through that study. The creator will really solidify that information and make sure that that information is is uh, uh, there in your brain to be used upon command. Mm. It's just there. Anyway, uh, so the second time through it, I just I ripped it apart. I I looked up every scripture. I read everything around every scripture. You know, started from the beginning, cross referenced it. Started from the beginning, read through the entire book, and made sure you know all the scriptures. Made sure that it was forming a cohesive thought, basing itself upon the premises that are advanced in fossilized customs. Going to the library, looking up source materials, making sure that the things that were stated in that book mm -hmm. actually existed the way that they were stated. That what was being said there was true within the context. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to prove this thing wrong, hmm. and I can't find an error. It finally got to, it finally got to the point where it was like, you know, I, I got immersed. I immersed myself, and I said, I I want to work for you, Yush. I want to be in your ministry. So, you know, I need you to provide an elder, and uh, it turned out to be Lou in, in my case. Um, but that was really the culmination was I needed to do another scripture is my favorite topic. My second favorite subject to study is the uh, science of detecting deception. Mm. I've always been very interested in the physiology of the face and, and, and uh, mm. manipulators and things like that and how people appear when they're deceiving or when they have very little confidence or trying to understand, you know, and what they're saying. Uh, trying to understand how the mechanics of that work, the biomechanics of that work. Am I doing okay? Yeah, no, you're all right. You're on the level, mate. You're on the level. Uh, so, my my the last. As long as you're not talking about yourself, but in. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. But I think you knew that. Anyway, just kidding. Anyway, so um, the last. <laughs> the last frontier that I had with regards to all that was to just go and look Lou in the eye. And I can tell you whether or not, uh, you know, whether or not there's any errors there to be found or understood And it. From what I understand, he would be very happy to know if there were, but whether or not any of those things uh, exist, I can tell you beyond a shadow of any doubt that having spoken to the man face to face and looked him in the eye and talked about it, that he has complete confidence in it. He, even if it isn't true, he believes it is. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. and you thought it was very cynically written. Oh, yeah, that was the other thing, is that I, I really was seeing a bit of darkness in him just by reading it. I had seen some darkness in the book, thinking that he was very cynical. Mm. But he just shocked me. He really did. I discovered that he's one of the most gentle men you'd ever meet. You know, just very genuine, very kind, very gentle. And he's a big guy. I don't know if you can tell that, but he is really a pretty big guy. You mean and like I, I, tall? Tall, yeah. He's, mm. he's large man. Uh, yeah. I had in my mind the, this image of a short, cynical, sort of bitter guy. Mm. And he was the exact opposite of that. Mm. The light was just shining out of him. He was... He kind of had this gentle giant thing going on for me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, and it was it was really a very intriguing time to meet him because um, what I was learning, what the Spirit was showing me through my interaction with him was something that I had believed for a long time but had never found how to actually uh, practice on my own, which was using love to overcome evil. Mm. 
I'd always thought you needed cynicism and you had to be thick skinned and you had to be kind of rigid and tough mm. in order to overcome evil that you had to be bigger than it. It really wasn't that way with him. It was so much more just showing love. And I mean, overcoming evil with it. Mm. living by example. I, I saw a tremendously good example of Yahusha in him. And that's really what drew me more than any of the information, more than anything else, was just the love that he showed to a person he had no need to show that love to. Mm. I was just a guy, another guy coming to visit him, mm. you know? Yeah. Why, why, should he, why should he show me any special treatment, whatever? Mm. But they were very kind to us. And I don't know that we did get special treatment. I think that probably most everybody who comes into contact with them receives the same amount of consideration hmm. and uh well that drew me and I, I i don't know i that that's pretty much the story along the that period right about that time that um i had begun to observe the sabbath maybe about a year year or two after i i'd i'd put off the pagan festivals uh then tina and i got together we have a there's, that's a story in and of itself how we came together. I'd actually known her for a little while when we first came together. Uh, but it was true love, is true love. And um, we came together, you know, put us together. And um, I remember a night just thinking, you know, there's no way this woman's going to be able to love me. Not when she figures out how different I am. You know, and I, I hung up on her. I hung up the phone on her. You mean different like because you were now Nazarene or different because you felt like you were a failure in life? I didn't know I was Nazarene, but yeah. Yeah, I see. Pretty much the things that I believed, I didn't mm. expect she would be able to understand at all, and I didn't mm. even give her the chance. I hung up on her. He's speaking mm. of earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whenever we first started dating. Yeah. And uh, we're seeing one another, yeah. Mm. Uh, I hung up on her. And for most people, that would have been the end of the relationship. Hmm. You know, she called me back about five seconds later and said, listen, mister, don't you ever do that again. Don't hang I was up like, on yes, me. ma'am. You know, nobody hangs up on me. I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad. You know, she uh, she's she's consistently fought to be with. Me. And uh, over time, I can still remember explaining some of these things to her. The first year we were together, she held on to some semblance of Christmas. She didn't put up a tree, so to speak, but she made this little spiral thing out of uh, out of a garland and put a few presents under it or whatever. And I, I didn't make a big deal out of it, you know. I told her, listen, I, you can do what you want. I, I just, I'm convicted in my heart not to do this. If you can understand that while you're doing that, I'm going to be in the other room or I might go to the mall or something, whatever. It, I guess it would have been closed. Go hang out at the park. You know, I don't feel comfortable being around it, but you can do whatever the father puts on your heart. You know, it was something it took a, a while for me to let go of just because of the family ties to it. Yeah. You know, the, the symbolism that I was taught, it wasn't so much the holiday itself. The holiday itself. It was the love and the family and the time that you share with them. Yeah. yeah. She she did it that first year and never did it again. We had t conversations. We've gone very deeply into this. It's been very difficult, our relationships with our parents, though, because, mm. you know, I mean, the, the reality is, is that I am, I'm a religious tyrant. I really am. I I rule with a stern fist. And, uh, hey, you, you don't want to know what I'm talking about? You, you want a fresh one? Yeah. Don't you talk back to me. Uh-uh. Anyway, so uh, I brainwashed her is how that happened. That's actually how she came into the faith. Mm. <laughs> Series of chemicals, some uh, waterboarding. There was some pretty intense, uh, yeah, some pretty intense uh, Who knows torture what my sessions. Think. Who knows? And I, I brainwashed her essentially, mm -hmm. yeah. because there's no way that she would have conceived a 
formulate any of these beliefs on our own. Um, <laughs> it's, Imagine it's, that. It's obviously the work of a uh, an overzealous uh, control freak. I'm sorry, I'll drop the sarcasm. Anyways, um, <laughs> it's it's been difficult. You know, it's been difficult. But um, I'm sure Mark can relate. You know. Having those family ties, and then did you brainwash Amy as well? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was uh, brain I was brainwashed too. Have it, you know. Maybe if we put our heads together, yeah, we it's, can. It's mm. difficult to. We can learn to brainwash some other people. To have those times when you can be with family, but not in that spirit. Mm. Yeah, it, it's. My family feels robbed, basically, of their of their time with I feel like. us and <laughs> uh, the grandkids, and you know, it's just mm. there may be a point in time in the future where we'll be okay with mm. visiting with them at that time. Mm. Well, I mean, I'm not necessarily against it, but I do know that my ambition with being there would be to share the truth. Yeah. It's, it's not going to celebrate Christmas. For a positive. You know, it's not that we would, we would not go there at that time, but I can tell you if we go to our, our parents' land, you know, the land of our fathers <laughs> and our father's fathers. No, if we go back there to our, you know, our home, during that time, it's going to be because it's Christmas time. Mm. And, eh, no, not, not interested. Just, you know, not love Not interested you. in celebrating, but we're interested in family and love. That's true. Yeah. Mm. It hasn't necessarily come to that point. We, we usually go there over spring break. Or Thanksgiving. Mm. Or over mm. Thanksgiving. And we'll celebrate, thank you know, we'll do the Thanksgiving thing with them. Hmm. Uh, I'm not entirely certain that we're not going to have another civil war here pretty soon. So hmm. even be even more interesting to you know be celebrating Thanksgiving in the midst of a a second American civil war. Hmm. It's it's getting bad out there. Man. I'm telling you, our government is taking over. Hmm. They are taking over. Hmm. People are really getting to the point where they're sick of it. Yeah. Mm. You, uh, you said uh, a, you said a few shows ago that you uh, you always used to hang out in kitchens. Why was that? That's where he worked. I grew up on the curb, basically in Lubbock, Texas. My dad is a physician, and my mother is a um, a biochemist. She spent a lot of time in school and trying to do her graduate thing. You know, they weren't cooking. They weren't spending a lot of time with us, and. Uh, I just, I just sat on the curb, you know, until I had my own car. I was sitting on the curb waiting for my friend to show up, whoever had a car. And, uh, you know, we, we'd get stoned and we'd get hungry. Yeah. And uh, if you're hungry and there's no food at the house, well, go get a job at a restaurant. Yeah. That's what I did. I, uh, I worked in restaurants for about 12 years. Mm. I worked in about 20 different restaurants, a little bit more than 20 different restaurants over the course of about 12 years. Yeah. Mm. So I, I grew up on the curb in Lubbock, Texas, and I, I, I uh, escaped into the kitchens in order to stay fed, mm. fed, fat, and happy. <laughs> he wasn't fat. I wasn't fat. He was very skinny when I met him, 160 pounds. Wow. And then, I, then I became one of us, Mock. Domesticated <laughs> man animal. That's what we are, domesticated. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> are you domesticated? Yeah, yeah. Coming down now, right? Mm. Your hair is a little wild. <laughs> yeah. Focus <laughs> <the> green. <laughs> Look like a rare bird. <laughs> Yeah. 
I'm sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're so much fun. That's okay, man. That's okay. <laughs> it's no problem. I mm. gave you a hard time too. Yeah. Look back and forth. nothing, <laughs> Chris. Oh my. God. Say what? I said nothing like Chris does though. <laughs> yeah. Now he uses the truth. <laughs> well. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I don't know. He doesn't know me that well. He's, he's, he talks like he does, but I don't know. Maybe he feels like he knows you that well. Maybe he feels like he knows you. Yeah. There's some things I'm going, yeah, you, I don't know if you quite understand what's going on really, but okay. <laughs> he's mm. also an elder, and I feel compelled to listen to what he has to say. Mm. It's uh, kind of difficult to be... Spoken to like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you know it has a purpose for it, so I'll. I'll yeah. Mm. Is that his normal self? Does he do that to you too? Um, he tells the truth, and he's the only person I know um, in my life, growing up as a teenager, that would do that to me. Uh, yeah. there, therefore, even though back when we were in Christianity. Half the stuff he said wasn't true. The things about life and the creator and my behavior and just life's lessons, everything. If you don't do this, this will happen. If you do that, that'll happen. All those sort of things, wisdom. Things that your parents would tell you, but you don't listen to your parents. He became my new best friend. So fortunately, um, my, my best friend wasn't my age, so I didn't turn, turn into a total, you know. Well, yeah. I kind of did anyway, but... It's, uh, yeah, so he just tells the truth, tells, <laughs> tells it as it is. And uh, he deals with uh, people all day, every day. So he, like you said when you were talking about the signals in the face and the, the tells and, and things like that. Yeah. Body language is really, really good at body language. So, yeah, it's been able to help. He, he about pierces the soul with his eyes. He, he really digs in. Yeah. I've noticed that about him. He he mm. he's a very good observer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we've been taught to um, sort of. We haven't. We, we came into this experience kind of not with the knowledge, but more with the lifestyle. If you know what I mean, it was more uh, living it and learning it as you go. Um, uh huh. And a lot of the knowledge, you know, still don't have. I understand what the people with knowledge are talking about, but I haven't done the research or the have it in my mind myself. But I can follow along because I understand what they're saying. But um, I've read certain things, but it's more about the living the the truth, being truthful and open and honest, and a lot of a lot of believers and. Nathrim certainly aren't used to having to communicate sort of openly from their heart. And that takes practice. It takes a lot of practice to do that. Doing it with you get love. better over time. Doing it with love mm. takes practice. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's, it's really that. Because Yahuwah doesn't ritual. care a whole lot about the information, I don't think. I mean, it's mm. nice. To, it's good to know. It brings peace. But mm. if, if I do it to a person without love, mm. it's, you know, if I offend them mm. if if what i do there and it's not like if they're going to be offended it's more like if i purposefully you know don't care if mm. they're offended mm. i you know and maybe i'm even out to offend you mm. you know and that person leaves with such a sour taste in their mouth they're never they're not going to want to know more yeah mm. you know, that's not the goal you, we've actually deepened their psychosis that doesn't mm. make you any happy mm. Yeah. Made it worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I um I think for me the thing that won me over and um the reason I will follow Yahusha is because I've felt his love. I think it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to to be in the presence of somebody who's who you know has given over their life to that to the point like you were saying when you actually uh, face Lou 
face to face and you saw a reality when you looked in his eyes. It's, it's, it's a thing to be able to look into somebody's eyes who you know have given themselves over to Yahusha and what you're feeling is not that person. It's the love of Yahusha coming through them. Um, you can see Yahusha in them. You can see it through their yeah. eyes. And it makes yeah. and um, you you melt, and you're right. Love conquers sin. Love conquers all the build up of of stuff, madness in your head that you would you know you know. Strong. Yeah, strongholds. Love conquers strongholds as well. So, for me, that's why you know you get used to communicating a certain way. And I've been an apprentice hairdresser and things like that with Chris and Victoria. So you just get used to what's up today. You feel it's gone. Great. Good. Yeah. Just used to that back and forward, you know, communicating about sort of things like that. So to me, it's like, I'm happy I've had that kind of training because I can now talk to sort of, I feel that that's equipped me to talk to people other than that globally. And you can sort of, well, you can hear the things they're not saying. I can, yeah, and it doesn't bother me. Well, doesn't. As well as what they are saying. No, yeah. I, I understand what you're mm. talking about. Mm. Being a therapist, I very mm. much get it. That's kind of mm. like, uh, yeah, being an auto tech with an ASC certification. I, I understand the terminology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actual practical. It's funny what you're saying about following, uh, you know, seeing it in other people, but following Yahusha and about that. The, two days ago, we were going over to a, a brother and sister's house as a Christian brother and sister um, who uh, had just been blessed with a very nice piece of property, a 10-acre piece with a home on it. A river runs through it. and uh, Lots nice, of fruit trees that are already established. Right. And the brother was saying, on a side note, the brother was saying, Terry is his name. Uh, it's Adriel's stepdad, actually. You met Adriel. Mm. And his stepdad and his mother. Um, Terry was saying, I can kind of understand what it would have been like for the Israelites to go into the land and, and possess a home that they didn't build and, you know, have vineyards that they didn't plant and what that would mm. be like to just be a part of something that mm. it was truly just given to you. you know? mm. Anyways, uh, side okay. note, we were on our way over there. And Jacob, we we're following Adriel. And Jacob, my son, says, are we following Adriel? And I said, no, we follow Yahushua. But right now we were following Adriel as he follows Yahushua. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't there. Yeah, you were. You were sitting in the passengers. You didn't hear me say that to him? No. You're just on the other side of the boy. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Because he was like, are we following Adriel? And I was going, mm. no, we, <laughs> I mean, we're behind him, yeah. you know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Silly joke. It's great. <laughs> well, I didn't want him to think that we followed anyone but Yahushua. Yeah. 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 But yeah. we also got to follow, Adriel's an elder to me too, you know. He's mm. he's 40 years old or so, mm. at 40, 41. Mm. 40, I think. It's kind of mm. funny because one that put hands on me and yet I'm your elder. You're my elder too. She's my elder. We're, oh. we're each other's elders. Yeah. Because <laughs> he laid hands on me, but I'm older than him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to respect your elders. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Mm. Very important. Cool. Yeah. So you didn't really get. Uh, they know how you came to understand. We'll uh, get uh, we'll we'll get Amy to Skype you, and you can do a girly show, and you can you can share your testimony. Mm. How does that sound? Sounds great. Because she she loved Messiah before we met. Yeah, of course. But you know she'd been raised mm. Uh, mm. Christian. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Like a lot of us. Like we all. Uh, Mm. It's an amazing thing. I've been having an ongoing conversation with a brother, and uh, I sent you his poem. Did yes, you get that? I did. It was lovely. A little late, maybe, for the newsletter. Yeah, it was a bit late. I'll put it in the next one. Uh, um, but uh, I've been having a conversation with him. He is about a year old, 
as a Nazar and uh, as Hanatarim. And uh, he's been having a little difficulty, the same kind of difficulty all of us face when we first understand the truth. And that's that, you know, go tell everyone you know. Yeah. And you're not ready to do that in a way where they're not going to be offended by it. Mm. You know, and um, that was a big question with him was how do you treat a Christian now? Mm. You know, and it's really amazing because we're angry. I know that when we first wake up, we've had a shofar blown in our face. Mm. We're waking up. We're a bit cranky about it, you know. Mm. And uh, we're not real tactful, not real real mm. ginger, gentle. Mm. And uh, You don't know the name. You're going to hell. But the truth mm. is. Not it. Mm. Not the way to share it. I mean, I guess, I guess there's a point to be made, and that's the hard part. Is it's it's so not about the truth. It's interesting that that the truth is not listed among the nine fruit of the spirit. You ever notice that? Mm. You know, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Notice the truth isn't in that. Truthfulness, mm. Mm, nah, it's not yeah. in there. See, these are incorruptible things. Yeah, you can corrupt the truth. Mm. Shaitan certainly can. He does it every, all the you time. Can go to, you can go to a, a, a vertically challenged person, you know, a, 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 I guess what they call them, midgets or dwarfs Little or whatever. people. You know, and say, you're short. And you, you can be, you're telling the truth, but that's not love. No. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. The truth can be used to try to hurt people. Yeah. And there are certainly people who learn things about what we've been what we're trying to share with people uh, that will contradict the established religions. Mm. And if you're already antisocial to begin with, you can mm. use some of these little factoids to punch holes in people's theologies. Mm. Sure, but that's not that's not loving. Mm. Not, you know, at, at any rate, um his question, Brother Eliyahu, his question was basically about about how do you treat a Christian, you know? Well, just thank goodness that whenever we were Christians, somebody had the patience to talk to us. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. He said, you would go into a, into a circus? Oh, absolutely. If somebody invited me into their circus, oh, you better bet I'd go. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stop for a, speaking the truth for a minute. No, not for a minute. But you know, if people want, I, I'm gonna call them Yahoo. I'm gonna tell them I love the Sabbath. I'm gonna talk about Yahoo's Torah. If, but if, if they want me to be there, sure, I go in there. Mm. I don't. I don't. I don't delude myself into thinking for a second that somebody would be like, "Hey, we like what you have to say. Come up to the pulpit and tell everybody." Mm. No, that's not gonna happen. But somebody might hear what you're talking about, and a seed is planted. Mm. Speaking of, so yeah, you got, if you got invited to go to the circus, would you go? <laughs> of course, I would. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway. Do you? Uh, I noticed you have Jim Staley as a Facebook friend. Do you uh, know who I'm talking about? I've had a lot of people join up the last couple of weeks. I, I think I know the name, but I haven't ha had a conversation with him. I don't think. No, he's, um, he is a, for all intents and assistant. purposes, he's a guide. He's an assistant uh, in Missouri. An assistant pastor. And he has a live Shabbat service every week. Mm. But um, he is, he still says the wrong names, but he also says, well, it's it's wrong too, but he says Yod Hey Vav Hey. Mm. Uh, I don't think he really knows or has been convicted as to the pronunciation. Mm. Uh, you saying he calls him Yahweh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, and they say Yeshua, mm. not Yahusha. But A lot of people do that. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. But he uh, he's very inspirational to watch. It's really kind of interesting. He'll be up on the stage and doing this message that, you know, he's been led to do, and he'll just stop. And he'll say, the Spirit's telling me to do this. or just, 
and, and it's just it's a he's a pretty cool to watch he's he pretty spontaneous Ooh. I don't know I like him I don't know Ooh. if you guys have ever taken the opportunity to watch it but it, and he records everything and puts it on his Facebook page okay so the Tina was saying that you noticed that he has him as a friend or something yeah Lou has him as a friend on his Facebook Mm. Um, I'm not sure if you do or not, but his his messages are pretty good. Lately, he's been oh, talking good. about the Great Deception, yeah, uh, spiritual warfare, mm. knowing what you're actually fighting and how to fight it, mm. uh, and none of it comes through us. It's all Yahusha. Mm. So, but you, yeah. very you, much into the Hebrew. Yeah. Great. Oh, you said Lou does. I thought you said you do. <laughs> you, Lou. That's you. what I thought you said. Too. Yeah, I get it. Oh. Mm. Yeah, no, I know Lou has Hence him as my a response. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. I heard the same thing, brother. Yeah, it's good. Great. Well, it's good to talk to you. I, I, it's getting kind of late for me. I think we're going to say shalom and yeah. Lila Tob and Erhancha. Uh, I don't know. Do you know Erhamcha? No. I don't know half the words you say to me, but I nod and smile, and that's fine. <laughs> Le Leila Tov is good, good night. night. Yeah. Leila is, is night, so Leila Tov. Yeah. And Erhamcha is I love you. You need to tell him your Mugu gay pan joke. You want to hear a horrible pun? Sure. It's terrible. <laughs> we'll end with this. I don't know if this is such a good idea. <laughs> Uh, what happens? You like to cook? Uh, no, I like to eat it though. So go on. So what happens if uh, the Chinese chef forgets to oil his wok? I don't know. You get mugu dry pan. <laughs> <laughs> it's really teasy, but it's cute. Yeah. If you can believe that, I made it up. <laughs> One of Colin's infamous jokes. Fantastic. <laughs> it's been lovely hanging out with you guys. See, that's a good reason to end a conversation right there. <laughs> Love you, brother. We'll talk to you later. Yeah, great. Yeah, tell me to call me. I will do. Evening yeah. time is fine just about any day. Okay. Okay. We'll do. Give her our best. We'll do. And give the boys a squeeze for us. A squeeze, yep. A squunch. Yep. <laughs> Great. Or, just, or just a good, you know, thump in the ear or something. Yep. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you too. Good night. See you later.